Last week, we looked at a marble moving at a constant velocity along the floor. We found that if we measured the time versus the distance, we would get roughly a straight line on a graph. The point should fall near the line for a marble moving at a constant velocity. And when we analyzed the line, we found a slope of 0.86, about 0.86 meters per second, or 86 centimeters per second. This week, we're looking at accelerated motion. What happens when an object goes faster and faster and faster, or slower and slower? Today, we'll be looking at what happens when an object moves faster and faster, starting from rest, starting from a speed of zero, and going faster and faster and faster across a 10 meter distance. We'll see what the shape on a time versus distance graph is. We'll start at a distance of zero, and I'll be accelerating a ripstick across this 10 meter distance. I'll take a measurement of time at zero, one meter, another measurement at three meters, followed by a measurement at six meters, and my last measurement will be up at 10 meters. My partner is on the ripstick at the zero meter mark from which I'll start the run. You'll be able to see the run in the next clip. Starting from zero at time zero, distance zero, I start accelerating the ripstick going faster and faster and faster at as steady rate as I can. As was done last week, the time is in the first column and the distance in the second column. So time is on the x-axis, distance is on the y-axis. And you can see my times as they crossed each of those distance marks at 1, 3, 6, and 10 meters. The points on a graph fall in a smooth curve. You can see that in the graph. The name of that shape that the points are falling on is a parabola. A parabola is the result of a quadratic equation. So the points have formed a shape called a parabola, and that means a quadratic equation underlays this system. Note that the slope changes, is increasing, because the slope is the speed of my ripstick. The analysis is that the distance is approximately equal to one-half the acceleration times the time squared. Remember, d1 is the distance, t1 is the time. Notice that t1 is squared. This is a quadratic equation of the form y equals mx squared, where the x is the time, t1, and the y is the distance, d1. The equation holds for a start at a distance of zero and at a speed of zero. I started at rest, so my initial speed was zero. I started my measurements from zero meters, so the initial distance was zero. That gives us this equation. For now, you'll have to trust me about the one half that's sitting in front of the equation. That comes from a little bit of calculus and is beyond the scope of the course. But with this regression, I can determine that A is 0 0.37. A is the acceleration. That tells me that the acceleration is 0.37 meters per second squared, or 37 centimeters per second squared. What that means is that every second I was going faster by 0.37 meters per second. Put it another way, I was increasing my speed by 0.37 meters per second every second. 0.37 meters per second per second. Uh, there's a shortcut to that. We simply say 0.37 meters per second squared. But when we say that, one should remember we're talking about meters per second every second. And I was going faster by that much. 
So I get a curve. The slope was changing because I was going faster and faster and faster. One might be tempted to think that A is the slope, but A is not the slope in this particular case. The slope would be the slope of the curve, and that's changing. The slope is not a constant. So that's a different matter. But the A is the acceleration, but it is not the slope. So this is an introduction to the shape you get when something goes faster and faster and faster. The shape obtained is a parabola.